my initial thoughts on coming here was that um like very strict don't do anything whatever but it is very chill so chill that there are couches in front of the police station and people just hang out in front of the police station So we just finished our two days off in Shanghai to kind of acclimatize to the jet lag. Uh, we are at the railway station right now. We're going to be going to Changsha. That's where our, our battery manufacturer and BMS supplier is. So we're going to grab those spare BMSs. We're going to have a look at the batteries, how they're producing them, do a little quality control inspection. And mainly, I'm just really looking forward to this high speed rail line. I love the trains. I just, I really love trains. This is the train station. We past the airport and nobody got off on the airport um, everybody got off at the train station so the pile of suitcases I just assume that you're going on a plane there's a train that leaves every two minutes a high-speed train that leaves every two minutes with the business class you don't have to navigate any of this or stand in line it's really really cool and uh, brings us right to the train very exciting so $50 upgrade each 300 bucks for the six of us we get our own cabin with our own luxury chairs all the space in the world just not enough space for eric yeah and that was a bad <laughs> oh. we're flying 300 kilometers an hour down on a high speed train which is about 200 some odd miles an hour we're about five hours out of shanghai now about a thousand kilometers away about 600 miles and that given us a good opportunity to actually see the rest of China. We've got beautiful mountains, beautiful landscape, still lots of houses, but um, everything's been beautiful so far. More than that, we've had a little bit of an opportunity to discuss some business, some Chinese traditions, and how we're going to tackle the next week or so of meeting with our different manufacturers. Yeah, we went into a lot of it is that basically pre-meeting strategy. What are the key things we want to talk about with each supplier? We only have a limited time. We want to make sure it's short and concise but also we wanna go with making sure that we're respectful of local customs. One thing about doing business in China, it's all about respect. Respect for your host, respect for the business, respect for the work you do together. And it's about getting to learn face. Sitting down, talking, you don't rush right into business. You don't just immediately hop to business, you get to know each other, you build a little relationship, break bread, talk, then you get to start talking about work. Wake me up when we start talking about axles. Yeah, I love how we're going to be there in like 10 minutes. So we decided to cry in the seats. I can get used to that. Absolutely. Yeah, anyway, yeah, anywhere. <laughs> so we're here with CTS. We're actually just about to go see their small factory uh, for high voltage batteries. Yeah, so a little history or background on CTS. We started working with them last year, actually while I was in China, about this time last year. Um, we ended up going to uh, Shenzhen. And then from there, I was recommended to speak to CTS at a Chang shop. So I took the high speed rail up here and met them for the first time. And a year later, we're here purchasing more batteries for future yeah. projects. So to think, this is incredible. Um, it's not like they're just making every component here by hand. Um, there's such a sophisticated supply chain in China that they can make every individual component through a specialized supplier. So all they're doing is actually assembling here, not even manufacturing, just assembly, just to showcase the specialization of manufacturing in China. Yeah, and look at the complexity. There's contactors, fuses, buses, everything. And it's still just being assembled here in one place. Yeah, so what Chase is holding here is called a prismatic cell. And this is the typical configuration for a lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, you know, Tesla and other companies, they'll use a cylindrical cell because it's a lithium ion polymer cell. This is a very robust chemistry called lithium iron phosphate. 
it's not susceptible to thermal runaways as much uh, just because of its density. And what's nice too about a lithium iron phosphate cell is it's far cheaper to manufacture okay, that's um, nice and it pounds. still packs a punch for a very low cost. Right? The, the chemistry is very cheap compared to lithium polymer and we can go with this chemistry because we're a hybrid. One of those little things, I am picky for attention to detail and I check that out when I'm going to suppliers. And one of the examples why I like this is that if you look at these QR codes, they're actually engraved in stainless steel. They're not a sticker. Now, yes, it would be easy and cheaper to put a sticker on, but stickers fade over time, they fall off, the glue comes undone. I want to know 15 years from now, when I'm looking at these batteries, pop the lid off, let's see what's going on. I can still scan that QR code to find all the information on every single individual cell. I know it's a minor thing, but these minor little things like this when it comes to quality make a big difference over time when you add them up. This is the battery housing itself here. So you have cells in three different rows going down. Um, now here is where there's essentially two horns that come out. One is the positive and one is the negative. And we're thinking that potentially it would be better if we were to reverse them inwards. So instead of having the cable come out here and be close to the frame rail, potentially we can have a cable going out this way and then ideally upwards. So this will be sitting within our frame rail and the cap will be sitting roughly here. So finding a solution for the cable to come upwards will be far better for us. <laughs> what? <laughs> this battery has incredibly high discharge because it's for a tank. But I have a tank, so You've got it's a tank. still a perfect fit for Edison. This Edison DeBoss Venture. Should we make the Shermanator a hybrid? <laughs> I want to make it a hybrid oh, so bad. That would be cool. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next project. <laughs> yeah, so we're here at the battery factory just looking at some of the charging parameters. You know, CTS actually builds harnessing. So what they'll be doing is not only building our batteries, but building the cables that connect the charge port to our batteries. That charge port is called a CCS1 charging standard. We're not yet using the North American standard just because CCS is just so prolific and common. And what's great is CTS can build that here in China and test it. Come check this out. They literally have a machine here that will pre-make and pre-test the CCS1 plug. As you can see here, this is a typical CCS1 port. You'll see this at a lot of stations in Canada. And uh, that's what plugs in to your electric vehicle. So even if we're a hybrid, we still have the ability to DC fast charge up to 150 kilowatt, which is a lot of power. And if you go behind me here, I'll show you what they'll be building for us. This is a test rig they built for us. So this here is what we attach to the vehicle. Um, so putting gasket and sealing around this perimeter means that we've sealed it shut and then we'll be able to use the standard CCS1 port as you see here. Pretty cool. And what we'll be working with um, after getting this in Canada is designing a shroud around it. We wanna make sure that this part is always protected and out of the elements. Something we learned today too, which was really great, is they can incorporate this kind of connector instead of our standard horn connector. What's nice about these too is they're flexible, right? Very strong because they're made out of metal and very specific. So you can only plug this in to the matching port. As you see here, they're color coded. It's impossible to mix these cables up just because it's designed as such. So a lot safer for our technicians. So really impressed by this design. Looking forward to switching our batteries out to this architecture. All right, so even if you don't like the Edison kits, if you don't like our ideas of how we're building a kit and you have a better idea for yourself, uh, because we want to scale Edison, we are also going to be buying these in bulk, which means that we can get them uh, less than anybody else could buy a single battery. So if you want to build a storage bank for your house, or if you want to retrofit your, retrofit your own vehicle, whether that be a truck or a car or a boat, while we're focusing on how we think it's the best way to do it, you can still hit up Edison and we would sell you the battery on its own so you can do it yourself with our buying power. And we're really excited to be able to work with companies like this to make that happen. Okay, so we had an absolutely incredible day today. 
Uh, we spent the morning meeting with their engineers, the owner of the company, talking about that. Then they came over, they showed us their small battery facility. We were able to go up to the warehouse, pick out exactly what parts we need. Tomorrow we're going to be looking at their much larger production line. Unfortunately, they said we can't film tomorrow. We're going to check it out anyways, but it's been a fantastic day. This went even better than expected. So, China has been amazing. It's the most technically, technologically advanced country I've ever been to in my life. And then you go to the bathroom, and it's just a hole in the floor without toilet paper. And no toilet paper. What is going on? So one thing that's cool that they have in China are these charging stations for your phones and your accessories. So Re Rebecca here goes in her WeChat and then you have these stations everywhere. She scans it and it's going to release a battery bank. So these are all battery banks and, and they have these machines everywhere. They're all over the place. And there you go. So 2.5 RMB, which is actually 50 cents if my math is correct. And then you got a charger for a half hour with yeah. all the accessories. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I just noticed somebody left this bike in the middle of the road. I'm like, man, that's not considerate. Cars are having to move around it. I'll just roll it out of the way. The bike has an anti-theft device. Now it's moving backwards. <laughs> it's moving backwards on its own, back to where it was. Like, it's trying to move it out of the way, and now it's yelling at me. Like, and there's a little bike with an anti-theft. I just tried to move it out, it locked the brakes on and then reversed and now we gotta get out of here. <laughs> Let's call the cops. So these two are for the cap. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so down, chiller, that does that loop, that's both for cap. Supplies power to all components, but an additional 24 volt power supply is required. Do me you. Yep. <laughs> um, and how, how many kilowatts of 24 volt do you need? Okay, so today's meeting was very beneficial. CTS did not just make the batteries and assemble the batteries to the configurations that we need, but all the control management, management that uh, integrates into the entire system. So how to keep all the components cool, how to uh, keep the cabin hot and cold, and all those things need to talk to each other and none of them need to interfere with each other. The problem is that the, the systems are plenty and complex, so we need the CTS is able to write the programs and uh, manufacture the system so that it's as simple as possible, as lightweight as possible, and as user friendly as possible. So um, it's really eye opening on everything. It's not just batteries, there's so much more behind the scenes, and CTS offers us solutions for all of that. So we've been really encouraged leaving this meeting. I'm very excited to, uh, and very, very beneficial meetings these last couple of days. Um, we definitely worth all the effort to come here and, and sit down and have these conversations. So, really excited. Here we go. Sorry, I was playing with a puppy. You were playing with what? <laughs> when we got here, Rich warned me not to pet the dogs. Don't pet the dogs. That one is definitely a tame dog. Don't pet random dogs on the street. Just are cute. Don't ask, please. No. There's no way that that dog has please. So we got so far we got don't take pictures of police stations, don't pet dogs. We'll see what else comes. Every, everything that I've been told about about China is wrong. Look at that. Oh. He is so cute. <laughs> Look at that. How can you not pet that dog? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed our Edison Motors video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for more updates and follow us on Facebook. TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram.